Lesson 2-1, if-then statements and converses. This is the start of proofs, and um, proofs are tough in geometry. A lot of people don't like them. Once they get good at them, they get them. The problem is, usually there's a nice bridge. We, we crawl before we walk, we walk before we jog, we jog before we run. Proofs are kind of hard. It's like starting at a dead sprint. So we'll build up to it as best we can, but if you don't get them, don't panic. It takes a little while, but it eventually kicks in. So. We're going to start with some of the logic that goes into proofs, and uh, a lot of what I do I call lawyer speak 101 because, you know, it's really ticky-tacky, but that's geometry. We have to be very careful. An if-then statement, also called a conditional, looks like this. If you don't work hard in geometry, then you will fail my class. So it's got the if-then. And that's the typical form, if P then Q. We call P the hypothesis. So the hypothesis up here is just this part here. You don't work hard in geometry. And then the conclusion is the part on the bottom, uh, the part afterwards here. You will fail my class. And there's really nothing tricky here about this. This is just the way it's done. One of the things people often get wrong is they think that the hypothesis has an if in it. So there's no if. And they think the conclusion has a then in it. There's no then. The hypothesis conclusion are just statements. You can write it forwards and backwards. If you will fail my class, then you don't work hard in geometry. That would be what we call a converse, which I'll talk about momentarily. But don't get hung up on the if and the then. They're just two statements connected with the if and the then. So the converse, like I just said, is backwards. Take the hypothesis, put it where the conclusion is, conclusion where the hypothesis is. So it's going to be if and then it's going to be then. If you fail my class, and notice I tossed the will out because it wouldn't make sense the way I write it. And that's my new hypothesis. Then you didn't work hard. So Converse is just taking it, turning it around. Everything we've done so far is just syntax. It's just the rules before we play the game. We haven't talked about what's true and what's false. Now we start to do a little bit of that. Let's assume this first statement up here. If you don't work hard in geometry, you will fail my class. Let's just assume that's true. When we say it's true, that means, given the first statement, you didn't work hard in geometry, you'll get the second one. You're going to fail. A converse has nothing to do with the truth of the original statement, the original conditional. So I've got two of them going back and forth. If you fail my class, then you didn't work hard. If you fail my class, then if you didn't work hard, then you failed my class. If the first one's true, the second one's not necessarily true in this case. Could be, but it's not necessarily true. So that's what I'm saying here. The truth has nothing to do with whether or not they're converses. It's just getting used to that. This is a statement. This is a converse. More coming in a little bit. So let's say the first one was, if you don't work hard, then you fail. If you fail, then you didn't work hard. A statement and its counter, uh, and its converse. Can you find a counter example for this? If this was true, assumed true, it's not necessarily true, but we're going to say for our sake, let's assume that's true. What's a counter example for this? What could prove that wrong? Well, I worked really hard and I still failed because I'm stupid. Okay? If you're not smart enough, you can work as hard as you want. It's kind of like saying, I'm going to work as hard as I can. I'll be the fastest runner in the world. Well, no, there's people with more talent out there. And it doesn't matter how hard you work, don't have the talent. So that's what we call a counterexample. It's how we prove something isn't true, which is very easy. Proving something is true, much harder. 
These are other ways to write it. So this is my original statement. If x squared equals 25, then x equals plus or minus, plus or minus 5. This is the same. This is the same. This is the same. These are all the same statement. They're just different ways to write it. So just be careful. And this is the one to watch on the bottom. Q if P. X equals plus or minus 5 if x squared equals 25. That confuses me. I would, first thing I would do is rewrite it like that. I would say, wait a minute. What they're saying is if x squared equals 25, then x equals plus or minus 5. Very ticky tacky. I try not to use it too often, but it does pop up. So why did I bring up converse if it's got nothing to do with the original statement except that it steals its words? Well, I brought it up because if the original statement is true and the converse is true, it's a definition. If it's a definition, we rewrite it if and only if. So here we go. That's confusing. Here's the definition. Congruent segments are segments with equal lengths. If I wanted to write it as a biconditional, I would say segments are congruent. So I just took this piece and rewrote it. If and only if their lengths are equal. I took this here. So let's write it as a conditional. If segments are congruent, then they have equal lengths. Or we could write it backwards. If segments, I know it looks like I'm saying the same thing, I'm not, have equal lengths, then they are congruent. So that's a definition. You can write a statement, you can write its converse. If they're both true, you can rewrite it as a biconditional or as a definition. Biconditional has if and only if, which whenever I can, I shortcut because I am lazy and I write it like that. That means if and only if. So now we've actually done some logic. We've actually taken all that syntax we did on the previous page and actually made sense of it. If and only if means the statement was true, the converse was true, I could have written it as a definition, or I could have written it as a biconditional with if and only if between them. That's it. Go do some problems. Good luck.